Avengers turn to ban. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another We Like Dota League 2024 oh, group stage bad. matchup. We are into week five, and it tonight we've got a match out of the Diadem division. It's Yuki no Fukushu versus Putting the R in RD2L. I'm joined tonight by Strilling. Ten How are you doing seconds. tonight? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good. I am excited Five to see these teams. I'm excited to get a cast of putting our Nardi 2L in because they've been criminally undercasted and I do my part to fix that. It is Dyer's yeah, I, I think I've casted two of their series or maybe just like three games of two series. Um, I did catch, I think, both games of the series they had against Yuki a few weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, happy to see them again. <laughs> I think really, uh, you know, the, the standings tell a tale, and uh, they're at the top right now. So you, ha you have to give a lot of credence and assume that they're kind of the best the best right now, and that Yuki yep. are, are, are fighting from the underdog position, even going into the draft. And we are well into this draft. All of our bans done, and it's a Dragon Knight to open things up for team pudding uh getting out lots of off laners in their bands and taking one of their own or potentially a carry dragon knight can really go into any core role right now yeah no i, th I think this ultimately uh i would expect to be their mid uh because they they tend to have kind of a a ball out mid and a, a like hard farming carry uh okay. i believe that i think all three of these bands are protecting both like potential uh, mid opponent and also just like heroes that really like take care of DK with ease. Yeah, yeah. You've got the the armor reduction from the corrosive haze. You've got the break from the viper. Like the it overwhelming damage of the death prophet. Lion. Yeah. Lion yeah, gets the... left on the table, so that's going to be the pickup for Yuki no Fukushi. And th this is kind of, I feel like saying both like yeah, you left you left uh, one of the better supports of the game. Uh, in the pool, and also, you know, if if we can't necessarily bring your DK down and very easily, we're going to make him as useless as possible. And I think uh, draining his ban is really effective. It is yep. Yeah, that mana burn from Lion is absurd right now. I think even after the C patch with the the adjustments. To the second phase Ten of bans, we've got a Huskar taken out by RD2L. Five seconds remain. What else they're gonna go for? Yeah, definitely focusing a lot on that like offlane mid kind of area, and like heroes that oh, like threaten to, to take over a whole game themselves. I feel like. Yeah, and that 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 really is how I define V's style on Yuki no Bakushu. Uh, they in the first game of the last series they played uh, Huskar was their pick for mid, and they picked it relatively early. I don't believe it was last pick uh, for their Ten for their mid player, remain. and he was kind of running over the game. Um, there Ten was it, it it came I would say down to about one team fight Nine after they got the first Ten Aegis at like twenty one minutes, maybe more like twenty four minutes. They uh, they started pushing a tier two where they really shouldn't have and got into an unfortunate position, like had a team wipe and it turned the entire tide of the game. And it's how putting the RD, RD2L kind of came back into that game uh, very quickly, I would say. Um, so I, I think that V's play style leans toward these, towards these death ball heroes and uh, putting the R in RD2L like that doesn't favor as much the death ball, but the uh, like s the secure rotations, uh, like they back up, uh, their team with numbers when they need to, and they try to play dodge uh, when they can't. So, uh, you know, this blink initiating hero that can kind of just exist on the map on its own and not be threatened is Ten is is great seconds. for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like the Dragon Knight opening Five a lot, knowing that, remain. you know, that's the kind of play style that we're expecting to see. Mm -hmm. You pick up the Hoodwink, so getting both of, like, the top of the meta position fours uh, don't mind playing one of them position five, which I think with Lion and Hoodwink is totally fine. So mm -hmm. no surprise there. I think has the I know there was a team in Diadem that ran a Ten mid Hoodwink as well. Remain. Was that Yuki? I think that was somebody else. Five. Seconds. I that that sounds like it would be uh, 
Hakuna Murana potentially. Okay. I'm not I'm not quite sure. Um even even Mongols I could see doing that, but uh I think both of these teams would stray away from it. Not that it couldn't be flex there, but uh just because I I think I see Miss Snow is playing this lion. Uh so thus far they've always first picked her hero and it, it I think like for the most part it's only been witch doctor and uh her signature dark willow and you know that's uh i i think that the the hero the, those heroes don't really play well into a dragon knight which they're they must be aware of um and thus you know you kind of go for for something that's going to be uh in a similar vein on the mm -hmm. five hero and i think lion kind of fills similar niches um while still being effective against the, the heroes they've picked thus far yeah, and she's she's played Dazzle and Venge, for example. Those are that's okay. kind of the the other the other pool heroes in her pool. Gotcha. So but. now not gonna have the save that they might often used to having. Um but I'm I'm sure I mean you can you can kind of play Lion as a save with how much disable he has. <laughs> like I, I, whoever I th goes on you is just gonna be <clears throat> completely controlled. It, they're complementary supports also. I think that Hoodwink yeah. really loves having other secure stuns to to kind of like make sure that hers lands. Because if you're just playing a game with like a, only a Hoodwink stun, it gets very uncomfortable very quickly. And uh, with the Undying coming out, that's going to be a little bit more of this area denial, a way to destroy trees and kind of unstun heroes. Uh, you know, it's it's something that the Nyx does not provide as much in team fights, um, and so mm -hmm. very different. A contrasting opinion between these two teams, where I think that you have a pickoff team on Yuki that's looking to move at high tempos, and I think as the game goes on, Nix and Undying actually become very scary uh, because they allow the, the the tower pressure and the team fights uh, to kind of be more broad and and take over. And this axe pick is really interesting. Um, I think they nerfed the Tombi the the sorry the Tombi the the Tomb Zombie. Uh, spawn radius a while back. I'm I'm not positive on that, but uh, it's still a pretty hard spell for an axe to play into, um, yeah. because you want to be able to blink in. So it it's I I see Yuki's uh, idea here, right? They need a fast tempo, uh, move quickly, and and kind of like find pickoffs in those side lanes type hero. That's what complements their draft right now. But they're they're sort of fighting uphill into a lot of uh, team fight, and this is looking to be like kind of a similar setup to what they had going game one of their last series against putting the RD2L, and already they're, they're draining their clock. They're, they're, they're kind of uh, deciding on what they need, and with one second left yeah, reserve was, time, they choose Gyro. That was nearly a random, but they, they pick up the Gyro. Um, so yeah, kind of, this feels like they're trying to secure some of their early game as well, and the Axe making sure you have a pretty strong laner that's going to be able to stand up to this undying Ten lane. Seconds. And then a gyro hoodwink is, I imagine, the direction they'd, do, they'd go. I mean, they can put the line hoodwink either way they want. Um, I think both of those should be able to punish a Nyx assassin pretty hard. Because Nyx's uh, lane isn't super strong. So Party I think is going to need something for their off lane that can hold up to that. I'm curious as to... I, I think the gyro will be one, but there is a chance that it is a, a, a two, I think, also. Um, I, mm. I know for a fact this Hoodwink, I've, I've thought about it. This is absolutely a Bork hero. Um, Bork's favorite item, I think, in the game is Orchid and, like, Daedalus, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> uh, Divine Rapier is probably not far behind that. <laughs> and and ultimately, they're, they're looking to, to kind of get farmed. They they play almost like a three point five or like a two point five. They 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 were playing sniper I think in the last series I casted with them and they be, they were the second highest net worth hero at the end of the game or wow. you know very <laughs> very soon before it um as from the position four yeah. so it was <laughs> it was pretty nut it was pretty nuts um they, uh, they 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 played a lot of clinks they played uh sniper so yeah like. Hoodwink is very much so in that same boat where if you feel like you're a competent player and you and you're you're going to get farm, you're going to access that because I think that the axe wants to stay off of waves so that way they can uh, be a, a a map presence and a threat Radiant with this lion. Um, and it's not that Hoodwink can't Ranger. come contribute, but she can do so from far away. So if she shows in the lane is farming the wave, uh, a hero walks up thinking, "Oh, a lonely Hoodwink," split pushing. Instead, now it's a a three man gank squad. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Bork takes all of that farm, <laughs> as intended. Ten seconds. And so Buttery Greg, Eternal I think this is probably a Greg hero. Uh, the, the, like, smooth scaling, uh, you know, I, I assume, uh, I you know, with a dragon I already picked, uh, with, with, a, with, you know, uh, it kind of matching... His style in the in the pause one, uh, we're probably looking for for an offlaner or maybe maybe a mid if they don't like the matchup they see, but they 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 don't have last pick, so I kind of I kind of think that they're looking to to shut down this gyros game at this point, yeah. and they're gonna do do so. I would be worried about putting a dragon knight and nix assassin lane into like smell. a gyro lion. That feels like you're just gonna be food. I think, exactly. I think they need something else to answer the gyro, and, and that's Yuki's read as well. They've been at the Centaur and the Doom, uh, two of probably the two best off laners right now. Um, yeah, the the patch the patch hit them hard, and I think that they're they're still very good, yeah, which says something. Um, Primal Beast banned out. That's interesting because I feel like that could have been a, a, a good hero for them, but it yeah. makes sense because Yuki's Yuki is playing at such a high tempo, and Primal might not fit with. Uh, Putting the R and R D two L really wants to do here, which they want a, a classic kind of like a like able to farm, able to to kind of do it all utility hero with some initiation. Underlord, eh, could do it, could do it. Yeah, they have some time on the clock to think about it. Um, and you and remember that Yuki does not. Yeah, they um, it's interesting because they banned out the Viper and Death Prophet themselves on putting. Uh, but I feel like those would be nice to have alongside your Nyx Assassin, like I, make up for having t- this Timbersaw really without a strong lane. Timbersaw? Timbersaw was taken out by Yuki. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry, I didn't see that in the beginning. <laughs> all good. We were we were chatting a bit for the, the first wave of bands, so we didn't get into all of them. Yeah. Maybe the Dawnbreaker. Okay. Interesting. I like this. It's it's a hero that that's going to back up the Strow pretty well. Uh, it's hard, you know. Axe is always kind of going to be uh, at risk of getting caught in that regardless of whether he's gone in already or not, because of the way that the ultimates uh, kind of conflict. Um, and at the end of the day, like, in, this, in the reason you wouldn't pick Primal Beast with this draft, because you don't really have a lot of heroes to play with you for the first 15 minutes of the game, Dawnbreaker can make those movements happen and doesn't have to force them because she has ulti to just react to this pickoff from Yuki and, uh, and is going to be strong even into the late game. So, and a Winter Wyvern trying to look to contest some of that um maybe set up some really nice axe calls and and gyro alts um i i i I feel less sure of this i feel like this is actually a hero that does not fit the timing of yuki no fukushu um unless it becomes like their kind of centerpiece yeah Uh, i do like i like how the wyvern like the wyvern should have a lot of space to be able to sit behind as like the nyx assassin's job is going to be finding this wyvern yeah. Um, seconds because remain. otherwise, I think with like Lion Hoodwink, Axe Gyro, like Five it's going to be really remain. hard to get past those four heroes and find the Winter Wyvern to bring her down. Um, yeah. Dawnbreaker, I also really like as uh, for the combo with the Nyx Assassin. Um, not even necessarily for lane, but like having that Invis hero that can go hunt around the enemy map. Um, and then as soon as you find somebody in the jungle, you just, boom, drop Solar Guardian on them, and they're dead. Like, you you can't... Very few heroes can survive a Vendetta into Solar Guardian. No, that's, a, that's super true. And and I think in the way that you want to purchase BKB to, to nullify a lot of what uh, H and Claire are going to be able to do in these fights, um, Dawnbreaker kind of prevents or not prevents but uh goes through that with a lot of her abilities right that's that's a, a sneaky one that they made a, a few patches back and now the ultimate is really good against bkb honestly yeah um, uh, i'm gonna go grab some food real quick from downstairs that's i'll be back in two three minutes uh in the meantime i will take a look at these hats uh gotta be careful on the draft screen so we can see it like undying it looked like he had two gloves on. I like this one that he's got. He's got an interesting mismatch of some different set pieces. The lion decked out, the green hand and staff. Big fan of. I like the wyvern setup too. Uh, Cause they've got the, the like bird head with the RGB crystals, rest of the body. 
and the bird is like getting some of the RGB stuff. I like how that looks. It's a good axe set. That's a tower. Not a set. Here's the axe. Called axe set. Got the, the floppy axe, which is amusing. Line we talked about. The gyro, pretty decked out. And a good set going on the Hoodwink as well. I feel like I never see the weapon for this set because so many Hoodwink players have the, the loot. The next set, pretty into the like green claws, I feel like clash a little bit, but I think this might be just a full set. Nothing on the Dawnbreaker, Arcana on the Drow. Uh, the Undying, trying to shove himself into the geometry of the map so he can't see the set. It's, it's an interesting one, but I, I, I like what's going on. And then the Dragon Knight. It's a cool Dragon Knight set. I feel like I have not seen this one. This one's really sick, actually. I like this armor a lot. Some classic knight armor with some nice flourishes to it. I think... I think even with the... Uh, the Naked Dawnbreaker, I think I'm still going to give it to RNRD2. So we're going to have a little clash around the bottom runes, but are going to be able to stand up and st sit on the rune, be able to secure it. Player going to try to chase down Miss Snow on the line, does get to turn around and drop the Blood Grenade for a slow. It's going to prevent Claire from getting some more attacks in. Exclamation sets up a nice air spike from the high ground in connection you. with the Celestial Hammer from blood. Giggles, picks Thanks up the first have blood fun. for the side of Pudding. Ooh, you do get a return kill. Bork. Finds a cheeky little one, chases down the Nyx Assassin who is sitting low after the first blood attempt. It's in there with a couple acorn bounces. I think managed to get it. It must have... No, it couldn't have bounced off the creep camp, so there's another hero in the area, but are going to step right back up. Finds Bork making their way to lane, knows that the squirrel is low on HP from the kill on the Nyx, and it picks up that one. Bit two early kills for Pudding. It's going to be classic Undying Drow lane down here, R and Buttery Greg. Putting up against the Axe Hoodwink. We'll look out for the calls into Bushel Axe from Shun and Bork. It's a lot of harass coming out on R, but an Undying generally does not mind at all. We've got 888888888 uh, up against Claire. The Wyvern versus Dragon Knight. Battle of the Dragons uh, in the mid lane. I feel like this is a bit of a tough lane just for the Dragon Knight because of how much range this Wyvern has. Um, the DK is going to be able to just kind of sit in the lane. He's so tanky, not going to mind taking too much grass. Up top, we've got Giggles and Exclamation uh, on the Dawnbreaker and Nyx Assassin for Pudding. And then Miss Snow and Hyrule in the safe lane for the Gyro and Lion duo. I feel like this should be a pretty solid top lane for Yuki. I think it's going to be hard for the Dawn and Nyx to get too much, but you do have, you have the Earth Spike set up um, into all of the damage from Dawnbreaker. You can chain that into Starbreaker, control somebody up for pretty long. But the, the stun into the homing missile is going to be something they have to worry about up here. Pretty even so far. Clear out to a little bit of a lead over 8888. And the water runes can be picked up respectively, so pretty pretty much chilling. You have Tombstone available for the Undying. You might see R look to start a fight here. They catch Bork out of position. Be their opening. Now just gonna be pushed under tower up top. Miss Snow gonna get the Earth Spike onto Age Exclamation. Now the auto attacks does have the Impale back the other way. It's gonna allow Exclamation to back off safely. Could have a courier snipe. Exclamation finding Gyro's courier. Yeah, feels 
like largely oh I, i'm thinking largely everybody's getting what they want but shun is certainly not only for not getting too many last hits as the undying drow duo is bullying this axe yeah i think it's really tough to play axe uh in the, in the early laning stage and especially against like a, a good carry like buttery greg yeah i'm back by the way welcome back had some action right at the start is we're gonna get a tombstone dropped while buttery greg back off i'm gonna get the turn in the multi shot oh. r is taking quite a bit of damage from the helixes but we're gonna be able to find the kill on shun goes it, on his way you kind of see this lane dynamic in that fight exactly where it's really the axe and hoodwink's goal to to kill one of those heroes right because they don't really win the long sustain trades uh, but Undying is just able to pop the tombstone and generally kind of secure kills and defend the drow where needed. And uh, a cheeky pickup on the gust saves that Undying there. Nice. I was watching the the mid where supports uh, both the supports from top had come over to contest the runes and ended up being a kill on the Winter Wyvern. Set up by the next assassin in the Off. They're going to use the opportunity with the line out of the lane to put pressure onto Hyrule. I don't put the Starbreaker, but it's like Hyrule going to be able to escape. But now, getting pretty pushed off of the farm and playing the RNR D2L, they're starting to take a lead in each of these lanes. This one's not much for words, but the first things I interacted with didn't even have mouths. So I Yeah, I think that uh, Giggles is about to hit 6. Kind of has a, a small advantage over high rules, and nice stun from Nyx is going to bring the gyro low. Yeah, they're looking for one more touch. Miss Snow with nice body blocks, trying to keep Giggles from able, being able to get in there with the Celestial Hammer. And yeah, they're going to back off. High able to get away. Would have been a pretty bad kill, but it's almost one of those where you like almost would have rather died because Hyrule now has to make the long walk back to base. Their yep. own. Maybe just gonna look to pick up some jungle farm instead. I think it's important to, important to live in those fights because Gyro is one of those heroes that can farm on the way back to base. Yeah. Right. Doesn't mind hitting the jungle early, so there's no reason for you really to die. And any 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 slow to this hero's initial farm means that you're like hitting your your item timings later and it really disrupts i think the flow of the hero unlike some some heroes that would rather like uh, leverage their health and mana pools gyro needs very little of that he just kind of ends up farming stacks and and backing off of like the camp anyway mm -hmm. get a rotation from 888 down here if they can find something on buttery gray gonna set up with the bushwhack be right into the call and there's Nothing Buttery Greg can do. Last couple of clicks, he will do it, and they'll use the Winter's Curse, stun up R, but Solar Guardian ends up getting cancelled. Don't know, is that just a homing missile that hit, or, because it didn't look like Miss Snow was close enough to the Impale, and that wasn't on cooldown. Yeah, it was a homing missile, it's on cooldown, but I, I think it was just a, 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 a poor timing, but I don't think that... Dawn necessarily wanted to commit there anyway. Yeah, they backed up and fine. then, and yeah, exactly. Dawn would rather stay top and not have to waste a, a teleport, which I believe he already has. Oh, so. Shun got caught oh, right at the edge of that gust from Buttery Greg, and are they able to clean that up? Okay, up top, Giggles under the tower, get hit by the homing missile, and is getting the mana drain from Miss Snow. Exclamation! Also falling low as the the uh, black cannon attacks, threatening to bring them both down. They're able to escape. For the mid lane, are going to connect with Claire off the Dragon Tail, but ADD has the curse that's going to keep them alive for now, going to give them some space. Are still looking to try to hunt this down. Some undying illusions off the rune. As bot, find a kill on Buttery Greg. That's a big one. Wow. Are out of the lane. Yuki no Fukuchu, they immediately step up and punish that. 
think thus far, like the even the kill scores in the way of already already two L, uh, you're very happy with this. And a hoodwink ultimate coming out, gonna connect onto the the undying who's popped the tombstone on the high ground. Can they finish? The undying they do, but they're caught up between oh, the two. Oh yeah, the big gust as soon as Butter Greg gets back to the lane, they get the bushwhack mm. on Claire. Butter Greg just gonna be able to run down Bork and Claire. A couple more attacks on the Shun. That's gonna find it. So. Vengeance and then some for their undying. I was, I was about to say that they're doing a great job of just shutting down the, this uh, drow, but uh, getting a little bit too ahead of themselves there, end up turning it, it into a two for one. And while it, it, it's not that bad, you, know, you would rather just keep your, your, your foot on the neck of the drow and never let up. Um, hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, even if you, it means you have to play a little bit passively. Um, Get falling off the map right now is really bad. And Drow now has six. Uh, feels much more confident, like standing in lanes. And Axe is, you know, still far away from the Blink Dagger. Yeah, it's gonna be. I feel like both of these carries, Gyro and Drow, are gonna be very happy to just set up in their jungles, get all the farm they need, and it's gonna be on the rest of the teams to find the pressure on those carries so that they can't just farm up a storm as much as they want. Yeah, and even though Gyro is leading in last hits, they're not leading in network, which goes to the kind of the performance, or not the performance, but the uh, quality of the lanes that they had, right? Yeah. Yeah, all three of the RD2L cores at the top of the net worth right now. Pretty narrowly, the Wyvern's right there with the Drow, but they are, they are coming out of these lanes happy with the 2k net worth lead. Yeah, I think this is... Ooh. Looking like several kill attempts bottom. Gonna trade one for one so far. Nyx caught underneath the tower. Hello. This is oh cool. yeah, just enough Thanks with Borg showing up. They're gonna find double the kill. double kill or the hoodwink. Buttery Greg now just looking to escape. Ooh, the bushwhack connects from Borg. Meanwhile, top Claire's gonna find the kill on the high roll. They get the slows coming out. Gonna try to turn in multi shot. The wyvern getting low. One more tower hit, but eight, 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 eight. He's gonna survive, and Miss Snow's there to restore the mana. R is gonna rotate over here. One decay probably kills this wyvern. Now we gonna get bushwhacked up and then hexed. There's so now much they, control. You have the finger on the lion. Uh, no, oh, yeah, looking for it, but a little scared to step up and get decayed one more time. Yeah, and you can you can use V instead of A <laughs> if you'd like. Uh, run that by them already. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> but it's funny to say. It, it is. It is the it funny ha ha name. <laughs> I, I very much appreciate that also their sponsor tag is just more eats. <laughs> how how do, how to take up the entire screen. Yeah. Looks like it's like ten in name and ten in sponsor tag. My goodness. <laughs> I've definitely not been saying it twenty times. <laughs> Blink dagger secured on the DK. Pops the regen, so they are able to fight for Miss Snow top <laughs> along with this Nick who has been deaded and smoked so they do not see uh, under the ward uh, we'll have somewhat of an idea now but yep, there's the blink reveal gets in with the dragon tail does get controlled up with the vendetta attack into the impale Quick smart still on the line. smart from H wait, waited until the, the hex was expended Dyer, right uh, so both stuns used on the DK to control and then going in. Yep. Uh, otherwise not really able to follow up uh, with the blink boost to, to commit in. Under yeah, that was really nice. Ex uh, execution from each exclamation. We're going to sharpshooter out on to Giggles. But I'm able to walk it off. That's the TP out and nobody in range to try to cancel that, so we'll get away with it. We are going to find a stack. Bork does not want to give the that one out. Throws up the pushback. Only connects onto the creeps. That's so my farm. Dyer's <laughs> bottom uh, Able to protect their stack from the Dragon Knight. Maelstrom finished on the Hoodwink. That's actually only a big damage buff in, in these uh, fights. Yeah, that is an early Maelstrom. I mean, it's exactly what you said. This Hoodwink is already ahead of their own carry, the Gyrocopter. Uh, <laughs> finding 
lots of farm on this position four. Yeah. And the six the six kills help. Yes. I, I think if there is a centerpiece to this early game mode, Yuki, it's, it's the You can go for a smoke, but Claire is actually the first one to connect. It's a Dragon Tail into Solar Guardian, but now it's going to be all of Yuki setting up around the Winter's Curse. It's going to finish off Claire. Giggle's not going to be far behind. Exclamation looking to get in on this, but nothing better. Huge decay for R, but I mean, so can this Undying just stand and fight? Taking a lot of damage now, does get it controlled up and not able to find the kill on Miss Snow. Exclamation does sneak in, and R actually does, the zombies finish off Miss Snow. And the Nyx Assassin now, oh, is this TP going to get out under the homing missile? No way. Ultra kill. Really well executed there from Yuki, and you know, while the, the, the Undying is able to, to get a lot of decay stacks, you you are kind of the same thing as, as DK, and we saw the DK fall uh, at the start of the fight, even though they have four levels in the Dragon's Blood. Uh, you know, Yuki has a lot of great scaling damage. Uh, it might not be percentage, but it, it, it does a shit ton, and that's all that matters here. Um, they, they even have that in the Winter Wyvern as well, actually, the percentage damage. Um, so not a not a problem to clear these these high HP heroes, and as you see, they're just running down the, the DK, not allowed to to farm in a lane casually. Uh, and, you know, went for opted for blink first instead of the mage slayer, which which is a great way to, to kind of uh, sustain these fights, but uh, not really possible this this game with the build I think, uh, and the amount that that they've had to respond in fights. Yeah, I think and now being cornered again. Oh yeah, they they really want to set up his last fight, right? which went really well for Yuki, but nice Blink's blink from Claire. The... Are gonna show up as well. There's the call from Shun immediately onto the Undying. Has the blink available? R just trying to escape. Has the stacks going up? Gets the tombstone down at least. But Shun gonna go right toward clicking away on that. Solar Guardian gonna make their way over to the fight as well. Winter's Curse going to keep Claire at bay for the moment as Giggle is going to go in on 8888. Turns with the Dragon's Breath, but just playing with them on this high ground with the Arctic Burn. Wow. Unstoppable. Finds the kill on H is... <laughs> oh my god. The Cold Embrace. Trying to down, to but it does up. set up the just call. Just a little late. Shoot, they bit off too much. No, Miss Snow's kill. there. Oh, just enough to find the kill on H. Oh. That was... That DD did work in that fight. Oh yeah. my god. Between the Arctic Burn and the, the Mage Slayer damage, which I believe is buffed in the last patch, at least for the amount of damage. So if you're consistently hitting them, you're dealing more damage this patch. Ha ha, yeah. it's even better. But uh, obviously when they when they do manage to get on top, uh, the Wyvern will fall. But I think it was a really awkward uh, response from the Dawnbreaker. Uh, saw the, the Dragonite getting low and needed to get to that side of the map without a TP and therefore, or, you know, as quickly as possible and just ult it in, even without, like, an enemy hero in the, the Solar Guardian. So, a bit of a wasted uh, initiation tool there, but it ended up kind of evening out, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't check the uh, fight recap. I'm not even sure who it, uh, ended up with it the was, better of that. It was like a one for two or a two for two. I think you're happy taking that on on the other team's side of the uh, side of the, the map for Yuki, and and you need to consistently be pressuring uh, the Radiant as, as with this lineup. And you see that they, they are running around right now as a pack of literally five, right? Yeah. They're 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 desperately looking for these fights. They want to continue it. They want a death ball. That's like their their game plan here. Yeah. Um, they they they've hit the few item timings they really want. Uh, about to go, about to, about to hit Ags on Gyro, which will be a nice timing. Um, and if they're able to kind of keep uh, RD2 on the back foot, it's it's less time for this Drought of Farm. It's less uh, space that this DK can make effectively. Yeah, after after the lanes went pretty pretty decidedly towards the way of putting, had a good follow up and now Claire. Gets the stun to set up, but here's the Solar Guardian coming in. Gonna get the killing spree for Claire as they bring down 8888. Shun gonna perform, fall as well kill. to another auto attack from this dragon form. Dragon breath out the cut of the trees. Was that the light collector? What where did those trees go right as they went for the bushwhack? Now they're gonna be able to chase down with snow. Mega kill. It's the earth spike. Impossible able to survive kill. for now. But ends up going down all the same.
Dyer should look to their top of town. Is that the Starbreaker? I'm trying to figure out where the uh, trees went. Celestial Hammer destroys trees. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's right, because I always... I remember they added Dawnbreaker, like, in, like, multiple of her, her abilities are good at clearing trees. Right at the same time where they, like, nerfed every other hero that was good yeah. at killing trees. They, like, increase the radius. It, it honestly, uh, it makes playing Hoodwink and Dawn a little difficult at times, because you can't, like, just, you can't stack those, essentially. Yeah. Um, but in this, in this lineup, it's, it's working towards them and towards their favor. I think that it wasn't more, uh, so much a conscious decision to pick for the Celestial Hammer tree destruction as much as something like the Undying, because that are, is already effectively a save, the Tombstone, mm -hmm. so you don't mind throwing it down literally on a tree to destroy it if, if there's like a three person stun for example it's a bit yeah. hard to think of that but these <laughs> players are good this is like a 5k plus average game so at some point we might see it exclamation oh. get caught under vision claire's there as well but the nyx assassin brought down quickly now claire just has to be the one to turn and be on the run i don't think anyone will catch but they, they do have the damage if they do yeah We'll do escape under the safety of the tower, so it looks like he will settle for just the Nyx, although they are going to bring the rest of the team over, so even if they can't find the kills, they want to find this tower. Really going to go in on R. Blink in. Sets up the Dawnbreaker that's going to connect onto two with the Solar Guardian. Yeah, Shun going to get brought down. Unstoppable for Claire. Miss Snow falling as well as Buttery Greg shows up, gets the damage going. Find Hyrule as well and putting the R in RD2L. They're putting a stop to this push from Yuki as they find a 1 for 3 fight. Claire blinks past 8888. Giggles, they're both hunting, but now Buttery Greg finally gonna find the silence. Onto the high ground, but somehow. Get up to the high ground, but back down, and yeah, Claire will be able to finish that off. These fights are so damn close. Like, I, I really feel, like, torn as the fight develops each time, like, as to who is winning them. <laughs> like, it, it looked really nice for Yuki at a couple of points in this fight. As you said, the Dawnbreaker ultimate kind of breaking up uh, some of these initiations from from Yuki, and I thought that the uh, Wyvern save was going to be enough to to sort of uh, break that up again. But uh, they're 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 super messy, right? It's counter initiation on counter initiation, and ultimately, I think putting the R and R D two L that slows, and so if the fight ever drags out longer than like ten seconds, it starts to turn in their favor very quickly, as you saw. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. These fights have been very knife's edge, and I, I love the trust from the playing Ooh! side there. Is whoa, buttery Greg just dodges that. Oh, it gets the gust. Another one right at the end of it. And, and you can feel kill for giggles. You can literally feel how 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 close they are. Literally, <laughs> that one a couple hundred units maybe. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's gonna be an unfortunate. Oh, oh, the curse to save Bork. Giggle steps into it as well. Oh. That's going to set up a three-man call for Shun. Do they have the damage here? They have the rocket barrage. It's going to come in. These fights! Oh, oh my <laughs> god! Turn back the other way. Shun gets the kill on Giggles. Hyrule in trouble as well. Oh damage. Mage every time Slayer, it's the Wyvern ended. Mage is teeing off on them, but now Claire jumps back oh. in with the blink and the stun and finds the kill on eight. <laughs> so close. There's so much AoE potential. They, they, they're like, they're like you know, this close to winning the fight. Every time, it's crazy. Yeah, there were like four times where, at least, in that fight where I was like, I felt like I needed to start explaining how one team was, like, had turned the fight around, and then it immediately gets turned back the other way. It was like, yeah. constant back and forth in that one. I mean, in all of these, it's these players are playing at the limits of these heroes and executing these fights so well. I, I really, yeah, I, I feel like I have to compliment almost every player on yeah. on both sides of the, of, the, of this match right now because like uh, they 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 are all so threatening in their own right that and making such like high level decisions that it, it it's it's almost hard to keep up with it, you know vocally. That's how fast their mind is moving. Yeah, not to not to, to you know. <laughs> diminish our ability to cast but here we go another fight breaks out hyrule at the center of it saved yeah, by the wyvern this saved again by the wyvern by the nyx but they <laughs> they're showing up and turning it around the stuns from the snow out in the edge the finger of death 
You find both of the supports, but they do bring down Hyrule. Now Claire in on the back of them. There's no Solar Guardian to follow up this Blink Stone this time. But Claire just standing in front of these three heroes, gonna get hexed up. Now gonna no, still not backing off. Buttery Greg jumps in. They're just pushing these heroes back to their base, even though they're down a hero after the last fight. And they're gonna take this tier two tower through the back door protection. Like <laughs> how R and RD two L loses that fight. They they trade Dawn and Nyx for Gyro. But then they're they're the ones like and they know that they have the advantage there. Yeah. They just push down the tower. I, I think ultimately I think it, I think of it more as a tie, and it's a tie on on the radiant side of the map, right? And that's been the 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 big idea here is that the death ball is slowing down. Even if they tie fights, you know what I mean, or slightly lose them, Yuki doesn't have the the long game sustain, like you know, uh, sustain for this this game. I don't know how to explain it, but there's the top three net worth. Uh, our radiant heroes currently, and there's a big cluster of, of dire, or I don't know if the colors are flipped or whatever, but no, the dire heroes um, that are like you know really tight groups and and represent a, a big threat together. But as soon as that gyro is out of the fight, they don't have the the, the firepower to really defend the T2. Giggles finds a solo kill into two heroes while the rest of the team is taking Roche. He's going to pay with their life as the rest of Yuki shows up. Now Buttery Greg gets another nice gust. Claire's going to be in with the Dragon Tail. It's going to set up the Solar Guardian once again. They're going to bring down Hyrule. Tries to use the BKB, but it's not going to be enough. Buy back from Giggles, Giggles for that Solar Guardian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're right back in that fight. They don't care. They, they As long as the fight's on the dire side of the map, they're willing to take it. Especially if they're at any kind of numbers disadvantage. Um, because it, ultimately they, they get to take these towers very quickly, right? They have a DK, they have a, a Dawnbreaker to get to the back lines. Greg is able to just sit there and pound on the towers, and, and that's the tempo that they want to play now that they have their items, that they're in the dominant position. With that tempo, going to bling right up in the high ground. Claire, though, is going to get controlled up and hits the Finger of Death. Curse holds Giggles in place for now, and Claire going to be able to back away, and Buttery Greg just teeing off on Shun. They find the kill on the Axe. Now, like we were saying, the the tower immediately they they bring down a couple heroes, and now it's a tier three tower at 26 minutes, 31 to 22. This game has no breaks, and putting the R in RD2L is looking to be putting another win in the win column for them as yeah. their dominance continues. 15k net worth lead in what seemed for so long like such a close game. This Arctic is coming up. They have the four staffs. Claire just gonna walk this one off and probably go right back in. Buttery Greg still being off on the tower from the high ground, the low ground. This is like Nitrous the team, right? Yeah. Like I would feel like RD2L. Like you see their 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 skill and their ability to execute in the first 15, 20 minutes, and, and you say, oh, okay, they're they're accumulating some farm. They they have a nice little lead, and that farm like balloons literally. I mean, like. It, they're on fire as soon as they they hit like the 25 minute mark and it looks really hard to stop them unless you are uh, very very close and unified in your team fighting um and you, H breaks the smoke the, oh yeah the just gonna... yeah oh, oh they're this gonna is the impales the but it, yeah i mean you're pretty happy they... eating that five minute smoke that's yeah that's not that's what they wanted to find. They wanted to find their first big team fight win in a while, and all they get is a bug. Is mm -hmm. That that hail mary is, is going to get broken up, and even if it means a dead a dead bug on the field, uh, you're pretty happy with that, you know. I I think uh, it's it's hard to see. Oh, as I say this, they're, they they kind of botched the initiation on the on the radio. Yeah, the it doesn't matter if he's on the other side of the fight. Eight, eight, eight. Oh, has the cold embrace. Survives for now, but finally are going to find the K. Very Greg. No fear with this Aegis still for another couple minutes. And meanwhile, the, the Dragon Knight illusions are already right up in their face. Now the real Dragon Knight's there trying to bring down Hyrule, but a huge call from Shun. Finds the kill on Giggles, but then oh, they, they bring have the Aegis down. down. Another one. No, the Dragon's Breath finishes off. Are going to force down Work away. the lone carry. <laughs> My goodness. I, I think that they have the ability to defend this tier 3 now, uh, with no buyback uh, threatened on the Thawnbreaker. 
or too threatened on the Dawn Breaker, it, it's a little bit more difficult to, to just walk up the hill. Uh, but 12 seconds on DK's ult means they consider it. They're going to split up. So while the, the big axe call was happening, did Ork just like basically solo kill the drow there? <laughs> I, I honestly, it was just it was just a clean uh, call on the axe. And then, yeah, the, I think the, the, the sharp shooter uh, had, was able to isolate the, the drow. Another um, fight going to break out in this triangle, put in the R and R to U2L, do not want to back off of this high ground. Yuki, they're going to find so many. Two heroes go down already. They are going to get the return kill on exclamation. Buyback from Bork. Claire can jump up the high ground past Hyrule. Turns with the Dragon Tail. Finishes them off. Splash damage coming in. And now Buttery Greg looking to finish off Shun. Claire going to finish off the Lion. Putting the R&R to UL. Looking to finish off this game. It's a triple kill for Buttery Greg. Another tier 3 tower going to go down. This looks like it's going to be Mega Creeps. And I think this might just be the game. They have a couple buybacks ready to go, but it's it's not the core buybacks. They might need to put up a fight. It's like they're gonna see if they can make it to their respawns, but this team pushes so fast, and now Bork gonna get controlled up with the blink. And then Solar Guardian again. It's Claire that's the one setting up Solar Guardian after Solar Guardian. Now Axe buys back, but immediately oh, controlled gosh. up. And that's it. That's gonna be a, a GG for sure. Yeah, I, not even I, 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 I don't see a way to Avengers. continue. They. <laughs> Take down the last tier four. It ain't gonna try to push them away from their found. Not gonna call the GG. See if they can take one last fight with three before this tier four tower goes down as the barracks are finished up. Mega creeps are found. Only missile is gonna connect. No, the blink, the reversal. Trying to bring down eight. eight, eight. Now they're getting some good damage on Puttery Greg, who just stands there, multi shotting, brings down two, giggles, cleans up the kill on Hyrule. They turn towards the Ancient to wrap this one up. Only a lion left standing. One last finger of death to say goodbye. The GG is called. Putting the R in party to well. Putting another one in the win call. Taking game one over you, you know, the It's really painful to watch some of these games. They are they are so close on on both sides. And I mean it, it's it's really beautiful right i think that uh the team fight execution has been awesome uh yeah. for both sides of this of these teams um but once once it like comes undone uh the game plans uh are really like diametric opposites and and uh the late game is is uh putting the Arden rd2l's favorite time to shine uh i think that they, they did an excellent job here uh, of just like cleaning this one out as soon as they started winning fights. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you look at that final line and it looks like this game was not close. Like you see 42 to 25 in 30 minutes, like this was a stomp, but it, then you look at the graph and for like until 20 minutes, this game was dead even. And yep. then it's just like a couple team fights on a knife's edge go the way of putting the R and RD 2 L and that and then from there the execution is just perfect to never take the foot off the throat and mm -hmm. completely lock down this game to bring it home. Yeah, the the graphs absolutely tell the story here. It it is it is really, really close, all of these fights. And even to the point that like there's a lot of kills being exchanged and a lot of action and we still barely see blips right on the mm -hmm. on the net worth and experience like comparatively um i i feel like i was it was maybe like five minutes of casting from a dead even lead at like 20 minutes to like that 15k gold lead we see and yeah you know the the the, the graph backs that up and that's that's nuts really uh for for, for having seen like a sustained uh close game and and I think that you, you like when you I keep going back to Yuki's death ball, but that's really kind of what it becomes. Um, and like when you are able to slow and stop that, uh, that's how these games get. And, and it comes to that climax, that precipice, and, and, it, and it really falls the other way. Um, so great job from both of these teams. I think putting the R and RD2L. Uh, knew exactly what they had to do. They just had to to sustain and outlast in these fights. Great last pick and awareness to do that, right, with this Dawnbreaker. Um, I think 
maybe not the I, actually I think that they could be considered the MVP Claire Claire's uh buttery era also <laughs> doing a great job um I think that like there's a lot of uh maybe maybe I don't I, I it's really hard for me to assign an MVP as I, I think I said during the cast like I, I want to compliment all of these players on yeah performance it's been really something to, to watch yeah i feel like i want i think i have to give it to claire like the, the mm. way that they were setting the pace just as soon as they got the blink dagger like they go blink dagger yeah. and then the current standard dragon knight build but it, like as soon as they have the blink dagger they were the ones setting up every fight they were the ones setting up every solar guardian uh just no fear full trust in the team that like i can blink into the middle of three heroes dragon tail somebody and we're gonna win that fight all right and and it looks like we are gonna get into this uh pretty quickly uh for whenever you're ready to get into the next lobby um awesome, yeah i will i d justice I, and i i want to give uh some some particular shout outs i think that v and shun that dynamic duo uh that really had a good concept of like catching and holding uh a hero for a few seconds and then being able to collapse on them um and i think that uh h in my opinion did a great job we saw a lot of smokes broken a lot of follow-up to uh some of these these like dawnbreaker initiations and and dk initiations um I, I think the DK was was really outstanding. Um, really, a, a difficult game to go thirteen and one. I mean, it's an incredibly impressive stat line considering how many times uh, they were kind of the centerpiece of the <laughs> of the fight, right? Like being being targeted uh, in almost every fight. Yeah, yeah, and for a while when the <laughs> game was closer, it felt like it wasn't gonna work like we were seeing all of the damage coming out from yuki and they were able i mean at the end of the day it only ended up being one time that they bring down this dragon knight but they were bring like the amount of times that it looked like the dragon knight was going to die because they had the damage and then is able to just like get healed up by the solar guardian step back while somebody else moves into the front like the you had r stepping up on the undying mm -hmm. so like just get in the mix get in the front get all these decay stacks going um, yeah and they also they they itemize as a, a, a bit of a safe support as well. You know they have a heal, they have four staff, greaves, lads, uh, giving the sustain to keep fighting, keep pushing these fights back in the other direction. Uh, they were not they were not a team uh, that often just let their hero die. Right, that's almost how you uh, get this death ball rolling uh, is when you allow your heroes to to just be picked off. Um, they were always pretty close together and clumped in a way that they could respond uh, when needed. Uh, and, and you know, it, it led to a lot of one fights uh, or very, very close tied fights that were able to push the, them back onto the other side of the map. like gonna be into the draft for game two in just a moment here selecting their pick and side priority i'm gonna take another fiber real quick and i'll be right that back for the draft it should be like you know by the second or third pick okay. second Radiance dies to ban to ban. Right, yeah, we are right into the draft for game number two of Yuki no Fukushu versus putting the R in RD2L. And I'm Whitehawk joined by Sterling, who just stepped away for a moment. Radiance turned to ban. And we saw a very fun game one, one to go back and watch if you're not here uh, for it with us. Ten seconds. In what was a game that was very close for a very long time, then putting the R in RE2L able to 
really put the foot on the gas, turn things up to 11, take the game home. Pretty similar bands to what we saw in game one, the Dragon Knight, uh, who after going 13-1 and 20, Yukino Fukushu says, let's not have one of those again. Take out the Dragon Knight. What was the, that leaves the Arc Warden on the table. That was the the ban that they had last game as RD2L, RD2L, they go for the same three bans, the Viper, Slardar, Death Prophet. Um, Zuki chose second pick, RD2L took Radiant, to pick. and they are feeling confident in that Nyx Assassin. They bring that right back, and immediately their response is Rubik for Yuki. That's going to be how they look to spin this game to back their way is say you're going to get a good draft footing we're going to have those spells for our draft as well it is going to be a little scary to play rubik into an x assassin a lot of potential to just get completely blown up uh, before a fight even breaks out, or as Ten the fight is breaking out, get hit by that vendetta, you are not long for this world as a hero like Five Rubik. Putting, they're going to stick to similar bands. They go spent. the Spirit Breaker this time, the Faceless Void. Uh, maybe fearing that they don't want to pick it into a Rubik, and so they don't want to leave it up for Yuki. See if Yuki choose to go with. Same ban in this phase as they did last game. Five I wouldn't mind seeing a Dawnbreaker remain. band out now that we see the Nyx Assassin again. I think it was a pretty strong performance from Giggles on the Dawn. We have a bigger concern elsewhere, though. I don't remember what they banned last game. Aren't already two. Or D2L picked or banned the Oscar last time. So that's potentially going to be in the pool. To pick. And now Yuki will go back for the Art Warden ban. They're going to take the Phantom Assassin. For Got an Assassin on either side of the board. He has not been very in meta lately, but I feel like we've seen. I think it does a lot better in organized play where you can Ten really make seconds. sure that she gets the farm she needs. I think Five it's going to be a little seconds. scary to play Radiant this slower tempo to core into the Nyx Assassin who can hunt you down in the jungle and just seeing the absurd pace of the game putting was able to set last time around. Ten seconds. Five seconds Dying remains to, to pick. It's gonna be the Wind Ranger into the Return of the Undying, so gonna be the same support duo for putting uh, in game two as they had in game one. Wind Ranger, probably a little bit of a flex pick, can work very well as a mid laner or a carry, um, and has Ten the range that you enjoy remain. having sitting behind your Undying. Five so I think they'd seconds. be happy to set up that lane for themselves. And I think Yuki, they're going to have to find something... I think something more than the axe they had last game to answer this Undying. They... Because that lane, I think... I mean, they, they found some good kills on Buttery Greg in the early game. Like it, That lane came out kind of even, but I I know that Axe's farm was struggling for a bit in that game. So I, I think they're going to look for something like stand up to it. They got a lot of the stronger options for it, though. They've already been standing down. The Nature's Prophet can get picked up by Yuki no Fukushu. This is a hero that... Uh, has been doing a lot of bans in this league so far. And they're going to go into the Underlord. Alongside the PA, another not super meta pick, but I, I like it here. Because it's going to be able to survive. It's 
I think it should be able to survive this undying lane. You do the strength seal is going to be a concern. Ten seconds. Um, but other than that, it's nice into the Wind Ranger Five because the Atrophy Aura back. is going to block a ton of damage. The Pudge is the response for RD2L. There's so much global movement with this Nature's Prophet Underlord too. I really like that aspect of this UP draft. I think that's how they're going to try to set the pace of this game. But can you outpace the fighting of this Wind Ranger Nyx Undying Pudge lineup? Like five seconds remain. This RD2L lineup, it just almost feels like full run at you. Minute one. I feel like they're looking to play another very high tempo game. Dyer's turn to ban. Alright, I'm back. Welcome back. Much more interesting draft this time. Hello, <laughs> PA. Yeah. Got some... Probably would say off-meta picks on the side of Yuki with the PA and Underlord, but... Five I don't think seconds. I mind seeing them in this game. You've got tons of global movement. This nature is an under. Yeah, it, it plays right into the, the, the style they like, right? Mm -hmm. Up-tempo, find kills, get the PA involved. If if you can't make PA a hero that can participate in the game for fifteen until like you know after twenty minutes or whatever, what if you just show up every time PA gets ganked? Yeah. <laughs> yeah what they, if you they're just... gonna have that response anywhere on the map? If you get a nice crit yeah. off of the PA dagger, why not just teleport on top of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea of that. We're going to see, it looks like both sides looking for a mid laner, so we're going to get two spirits banned out, the Ember and the Storm. Huskar, the other ban for Yuki. A little interesting that Yuki is the one to take out the Huskar. Ten seconds. I feel yeah. like that's like classic overall last pick here. I don't think it plays well into Pudge or uh, Wind Ranger as part yeah. of the problem. And this Troll Warlord is also going to uh, limit the the heroes that they can really pick. Um, decent against the PA, actually. If you ever if you are able to get on top of her, um, the, the blur being the really annoying part, actually, because you can kind of shift the the aggro onto other heroes very easily if if you Five aren't on top of her. Mm -hmm. But but they're they're it's gonna remove things like I think Puck, I think uh these like flighty heroes that if they get caught in a net just die, especially with follow up from the Knicks and the Wind Ranger. Not that you really want to pick a puck here, I guess, but um, you know, they, they they removed the ember, which is a, a good way to to kind of never be caught. <laughs> yeah. In a way. <laughs> Has a little bit more build and okay. Oh. Uh, I guess it's gonna be a nature's profit mid then. Uh, or mid. Oh, sense. it's the off lane Rubik! Yeah! Wow. <laughs> OG played this today. Um you just go Dagon and you just blow them up. Um That's Oh, awesome. I'm so excited that we get to see them try to do this. It it was um Whisper played it for, for OG this morning, uh in Dream Could... League. <laughs> Does the the Dagon builds out of a what? No, is it, is it a Kaya or is it like a just a? I, I I'm not familiar with the the build at all. I know that the, there's been a lot of buffs to spellcasters, and I feel like a lot more uh, hero untradition non traditional heroes in the three is something we're going to kind of see more of this patch, which is still pretty fresh. I was playing Coracle the other day, and I know that uh, in, in the in the circlet division, all the way down in the trenches, there was a mid Oracle played. Uh, today. Um, oh, okay. so so there there's there's kind of precedent for this if this is going to be a, the the off lane Rubik mid mid uh, Underlord as we think and safe lane. I'm very confused actually because Bork is playing the PA. So oh, I don't, so I think that's, they're doing a role swap. As well. That's what that's what I assume. Oh, is it not going to be is it not going to be a core Rubik then? I, no, I think it's still a core Rubik. It's probably a mid Rubik. I don't know. I think maybe maybe like Shun is getting bumped down to the four, uh, so that way V can come into the off lane. I'm I'm really curious to see how they lane this. Actually, I'm yeah. I think I'm more confused the more I look at it. <laughs> um, which is maybe a good thing. 
Yeah. Oh my god. A lot of heroes. A lot of games on Nature's Prophet. That was like 1,200 games on Nature's Prophet or something? What? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Prepare um, for battle. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that. I, maybe that was just displaying strangely, or I misread that stat line. But Jesus. Okay. Let's see. Where? What do these heroes have for items? Oh, um, I still can't tell because there's just there's just a robe of the Magi on Hyrule, and then that, circlet and branches for Shun. So it's, I can't may, tell which one of those is a core. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, nature's is definitely a core, right? Because sprout plus plus robe of the magi means this is either a three or a, or like it's definitely a core. That's all I can say. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, I actually no, it, it's definitely you know what? It's a fucking PA four. They're running the same lanes they normally do. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I oh, maybe a I'm PA four. No, because the orb of venom blightstone. I and think you're right. The Rupik is building in like null. I don't know that. I think that's like that could be three. It could be three or four. You know, you have a you have a PA four. So you, you can you... walk up the high ground into a four man decay. Oh my goodness, the damage card things off the hook. Okay. What, what is happening in this game already? Hex the Mation. I'm gonna try to get brought down. Eight, eight, eight. Thanks for playing. Giggles finish it off, but it's four dead on Yuki as they walk up the high ground. And Miss Snow is it? It's the full team wipe, a triple kill with the hook from Giggles. Oh God! Mm. This Pudge just gets to start almost at level two. Seven hundred fifty gold in the pocket. Make that eight hundred after more runes are found. I. <laughs> that was not what Yuki wanted to start this game with. Um... No, and I yeah, don't think so. It looks like the the positions are the same. So it is a 4 PA an offlane Rubik, a mid underlord who's yeah, no already way. just walking under Claire's tower saying you you can't really click on me because I have atrophy aura. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean it, it kind of makes sense, right? I I I I feel like I I they kind of fuck with this idea of Yuki. It's just uh it's not great to start off the game with a team white. It's not the first, no. probably nor the last we'll see it in this in this league. <laughs> but you know, I don't think it matters all that much. It's it's one of those things where they, they could very easily uh, come back from that. It matters less than you think, but it makes the, the early laning just a little bit harder. And Shun's gonna go down on that Rubik bottom lane. Yeah, struggling, I... struggling to lane right now. PA, oh, less than 400 health. That's not what I like to see on oh, my floors. <laughs> two, oh, boy. Two okay, decay got level hits. two now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how this Rubik PA lane will go into this Undying. I think I think this idea can work, but it seems really scary into such a strong lane. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't help to, to start the game as we as we did. I'll stop talking about it now. But that's like really the the, the thing here. Like, uh, it's already it was already going to be a hard lane for you, and now it's a really hard lane. Uh, the 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 idea that they have is kind of a little bit gone in the wind, and they have to play for recovery right now. Um, and, and you see the PA backing off of that uh orb of corrosion rush that they had lined up. Nice double decay. Yeah, R, R has been getting an absurd amount of strength in these games. <laughs> Finding the, the perfect timings for those decays. Yeah, just giving Buttery Greg all the space in the world. Because neither of these heroes can play around in Undying. I, 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 mean, I do think that... Back, he's going to keep walking at them. Nice positioning by Shun to let Bork get the blink away. What, the one thing I will say is, going in the favor of Yuki, uh, Claire is having a rough time mid. Uh, Underlord, a hero that very much so can just kind of shove in your wave, uh, start denying up uh, a hero's post power shot, uh, or sorry, creeps post power shot, and uh, you basically are never threatened, even when the ultimate comes out, because, you know, again, Atrophy Aura just destroys this hero as core. Yeah. Yeah, I like this Underlord pickup a lot, and it's, like, super mean you're putting it in the mid lane. Two stone drop bottom, oh, and no. what's gonna fall. It really just was, like, it's just too low health. 
to play. Uh, you know, the <laughs> the fluffy hat no longer builds into the orb of corrosion, <laughs> so not able to pick that up as a value item. And the armor is not going to do any any good in this lane. Uh, now opting for the boots, realizing that they're they're playing on the back foot. Not talked a lot about the top lane because it's been quiet to start things off after Giggles started the game with the triple kill. This is the carry nature's profit, which we haven't really talked about yet, uh, up in this lane. It's the most boring carry on the planet. Like yeah. quite literally, you 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 basically never die um, as long as you don't, you're not facing like a multi stun uh, lane. Oh, and he's got a TP. Oh, mid the TP now. to finish off this kill on 8888. Eight, eight, eight. Uh, doesn't end up being needed as Claire finds the, the power shot. Well, he he, he came to help, oh. uh, but oh, now right. is now finds himself in a bit of an awkward position. But yeah, I was thinking uh, of that completely backwards. Exclamation! <clears throat> trying to escape from the nature's profit now. Another sprout is available. They did nerf the damage on the Sprout. It doesn't linger nearly as long. Ooh. The Bramble connects! Beautiful from Miss Snow. That is not an easy thing to position. Uh, and cancels that TP. They are going to finish off the kill thanks to the tower. Very, <laughs> very strange move. I think, uh, you know, they were getting a decent amount top. So, but like not not owning the lane, uh, they probably miss a wave or two. Uh, but it's very strange to see both heroes from a lane um, move around the map this this early. Yeah, <laughs> that is. I think Hexclamation is pretty satisfied with themselves getting that kill, setting up the kill mid, and then creating that much space for the carry yeah. for Yuki is not farming. We are going to get both supports coming over to further punish Claire's lane. Hexclamation again is going to get it, show up, get the two men in pale. R rotates over as well. Claire finally gets brought down, but they do get the return kill on board. Now 888 trying to bring down this tombstone, but it's just going to fall and doesn't get the last click on it, which means Miss Snow is slowed up by like three zombies, and it's a double kill for Hexclamation. They liked the amount of fighting in the last game, and they said, why don't we just keep it going? Yeah. <laughs> It's oh, 11 boy. <laughs> to 4 at 6 minutes. There's a 4k net worth lead for pudding. Uh, <laughs> look to their middle tower. This is... This is a game of Dota. This is a very funny game of Dota. <laughs> um, and Miss Snow has still a Midas queued up. Who's <laughs> kind of playing Romer right now. <laughs> Going Midas first item, which is... I mean, I understand it in a way, but it's very funny. Yeah. And Invis Undying showing up in the bottom fight, gonna yeah, go exactly. straight on the shoon. Exactly when Buttery Greg Bork? hits them. Bork trying to finish off. Hyrule gonna make the rotation over Man. as well. That's That one's worth. They're uh, gonna find at least kill. one. Yeah, 888 comes over on the gate. The eight gate. And the right. control of R is bringing you down. So yeah, there's that global presence that you have. And the fact that this is your carry and mid laner that have this mobility, uh, I think does make it a good deal scarier, especially when they're yeah. showing even before hitting level six on Iron, they're able to make a play like that. Yeah, and that, and it's it's kind of one of those uh, catch twenty twos because you, you usually you don't see your mid and your your safe lane making a lot of moves together. It's a little bit inefficient in the early game, but at the end of the day, if you can kind of guarantee that they work out and you both show up at the same time with like very little wasted time because you have to be right at the fight when it breaks out, it's very good. And Claire's Claire gonna go down. Bot, uses focus fire on the undying and just dies. They do get their return kill on Bork, but 8888 will be able to walk this one off. Buttery Greg looking for something. Throws down the whirling axes on Shun. And gonna pop the ult. That'll finish off the Rubik. And Hyrule gonna be in trouble too, as both supports set up under the tower and give the double kill over to Buttery Greg. So, ends up an awkward start, but putting the. They close out that engagement we got the party lane going in bot uh which does at least well no I, i'd say it at least means that uh yuki's getting the space but their their carry dies there so bringing yeah. so many heroes to the party that uh nobody is, is back at home getting the farm they want the one not partying is giggles and this pudge quietly at the top of the last hits and right up there near the top of the net worth once again at the eight minute mark We've got R and R D two L 
at the top of the network for all three cores. Cheeky and snipe onto the Underlord. Yeah, exclamation picks up the kill on the mid laner. Down that big beefy Underlord. Giggles trying to move on to Hyrule. Misses the hook, losing the vision from the Sprout. I really just gonna watch the TP away. And miss no wants to copy. Uh, cancel the TP because would have been in a little bit of trouble without the help of the nature's profit there. Yeah. It, it, it's you don't really ever have to rotate to defend the natures. I think if they get they get gone on, they kind of are dead. And otherwise they will be able to escape. Uh, it's the Underlord and the, the, the Rubik that you look to TP to, um, and especially the Underlord because they want to react to fights, right? So yeah. if the Underlord gets gone on, uh, that's that's your backup. They're, they're already at the back lines, um, in a way. We're going to initiate with the Dagger, trying to set up something on Claire. Wind Ranger going to be able to get the Wind Run off or the Curse Crown connects and Bork's now the one sitting a little low. Giggle's going to TP in, is going to try to find the hook. Tomb Zone Zombie going to be a little awkward but finds it after the zombie is killed. Bork goes down. Buttery Greg found a soul kill on Shun down bot. And then Mist Snow brought down as well by Giggles. This Pollage, six Flesh Heap stacks at the start of the game. At just ten minutes. This is... Get out of control. Yeah. This, is, this, this, this game, the pace of this game is not uh, helping Yuki right now. Uh, PA does not even have six finished. Uh, so, really needs to, to get that, I think, before they can consider uh, showing up to any more fights. They're going to get it from this wave, but rough start for their, their kind of support duo, especially. Yeah, and Bork gonna be in a bit, of, a bit of trouble, it looks like. The smoke coming over the Impale, the Decay. Bork is gonna be able to step away over the, towards the creeps. Oh, right into oh, no. the hook. Giggles. <laughs> Giggles is probably giggling to themselves right now about that kill. He fully set up by the supports, and you just step over. You don't even leave the lane. You just throw the hook, get the kill, back to hitting creeps. Well, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that was to guarantee the uh, Flesh Heap set, you know. Because yes. if you get the hook to finish the kill, <laughs> you, you you get the scaling. Uh, it, it was really a heads up play. That's <laughs> that's what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, where 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 is Yuki's path back into this game? I mean I feel like they're getting decent farm. I mean the the Rubik is <laughs> pretty far in the back. Uh, I think it's it, that blink dagger. It falls on the orchid, which is about two hundred gold away on, on the natures. If they can find the troll alone, uh, get an orchid into stun combos, they get that kill every time. Oh! But oh, nice deny! <laughs> oh my god, that was the funniest death. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was vendetta power shot single attack from the ancient camp. <laughs> that, those were the three things that dealt damage to that Dark Willow. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's it's and, calculated, okay? Yeah, that was that was absurd. And they, they get the kill on Claire, they bring a bunch of heroes over the lane, so that actually goes great for Yuki. That's the kind of thing they need. Um, yeah. I wish I opened that. <laughs> no no boots, no stats, uh, <laughs> just a Midas and vibes on this snow. <laughs> And a, and a dream. lot of wards. <laughs> They're gonna look to set up on this Pudge. This is a scary target to try to bring down. They've brought a lot of heroes. They've got a damage amp rune. I really will get that TP in behind, and they are That's going to be able kill. to down this Pudge. Six kill streak. Down. To Miss Snow. <laughs> One K. Oh, actually, no. you love that. One K gold to Miss Snow. That's boots right now, baby. You yeah. need that. <laughs> That's, you know what, you were asking how to go back in this game, and, and I'll tell you how. Miss Snow knows. It's Treads Ags. Yep. Miss Snow's <laughs> secret carry. You thought it was Nature's carry? Uh-uh. No, Nature's no. is playing the support. That's why they went Orchid. Yeah. This was this was a roll swap after all. Dyer's <laughs> <laughs> bottom tower is under attack. Stolen hook trying to connect with the TP. <laughs> 
that one off, and then can I immediately join the supports and smoke up? Looking for the hook angle. Yeah, I think waiting Only for one a level to come up because that's five seconds as well. Yeah. <laughs> Shun says, "Hey, get get over here. Make sure it works. Take this gank for me because I don't know where that punch just went." Here's exclamation though, connecting on the back with Vendetta. <laughs> Not gonna <laughs> work out for them. Yeah, Shun goes down. Eagle's gonna clear out some of the brambles and the rest of Pudding gonna show up to pressure down this tower. They just secured Blink on Rubik, so they, they have kind of guaranteed that all five of their heroes can kind of be at the fight, assuming that, you know, Miss Snow kind of is in the mix or uh, or the PA, right? Mm hmm Whoa. Aether lens on the Underlord. That is <laughs> funky. I E Blade, I guess, is the build here. Yeah, and, has the E Blade queued up. And I mean, it sort of makes sense. Like it, it, it builds into this idea of killing the troll. Um, yeah, it's a good is... answer for the troll and the the um, wind wind ranger. Yeah, you, yeah. It's it's like building a halberd, but it gives you more for your team. It gives you a little more reach with your catch. And it's going to set up the nukes from this offlane Rubik even Radiant better. Should look to their middle tower. Should yeah, super, look to their super tower. interesting itemization here. Hunting Hyrule. Are we going to be able to get under the tower? Oh, steps back out. That's going to be the Vendetta into the Impale. That's going to flare. Orchid wow. not be enough. Mega kill for the next assassin. Had a magic wand to just didn't get it in time. Thought they were going to be able to turn and, and sprout up, but down bot they're gonna look to control up flare sets up the brambles work in but get shackled up miss on the shadow realm attack all stacked up but that's gonna be a okay giggles does want to try to find something in response here or be able to blink away Throw the dagger out still thinking about contesting this Throw the rot on rubik not the spell you're hoping for on here that button on fudge And all five heroes in the bottom lane for Yuki, they're gonna take this tower. Yeah, trying to find some presence out on the map. Yeah, it, th game. this game is kind of getting away from them only because I think the trolls farm is increasing at a pace that theirs is not. R is gonna show up with the tombstone. Get this fight started, but Shun gonna go yeah, down as well. Not able to bring it down fast enough. Walking at high roll, and this member back into the sprout. Nice cancel from a snow, but can he get out of the rot? Nope. The Ags is already there on the giggles. Dodges the hook, very nice. Eight eight finishes off that kill. Now they have the control onto the Nyx assassin with the dust. Nyx trying to get over to high oh! roll. No, <laughs> no greedy, <laughs> greedy carry. Oh. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. The carry, the carry got the kill. That's true. That's true. That it was intentional. Yeah, I was actually just setting it up for Miss. It's it's more efficient because Nature's Prophet can be right back in the action once they respawn. Uh, really. Shackle on Shun into the focus fire. Easy pick up to Claire. Audrey Greg has been very quietly enjoying the space that's being made, even when Yuki's been getting some fights going their way. Battle Fury almost full Sanj and Yasha for the Troll Warlord. Yeah, the, the Troll had a, a bit of a, a slow early game, but now it is certainly ramping up and, and going Buddy Greg, Buttery Greg's way. Um, and it's going to get harder and harder to bring this Troll down. Hasn't opted for a, a purge yet, so is still susceptible to the orchid. Um, but cl like narrowing the window in which you can be affected by the orchid and eventual bloodthorn uh, is gonna is gonna improve your chances of being able to ult, and that's all that matters as yeah. as troll. So plus they 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 do lack like a, a typical frontliner in a lot of ways i mean this pudge has yeah. a lot of farm and therefore and a lot of stacks so it is is pretty tanky um and undying is able to build up that decay but they need somebody who can kind of 
be gone on at times. Well, Claire gonna set up an 8 and Exclamation is there to snipe it with the Dagon. Yeah. Yeah, the 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 Dagon Nyx build is gonna is gonna nullify a lot of the E Blades uh like real defensive capabilities here, right? Because while it might be good against the troll, it might be good against uh the uh Wind Ranger, you're not gonna be able to escape the the the, man, the magic damage coming out from Nyx. Yeah. So you have to use it on the wind or troll. Yeah. In your defense rather than risking attack. setting up for the magic damage of the Nyx. Yeah, and in that scenario, uh, you know, seeing both heroes, you, you were tempted to put on yourself. Shun gonna get Ow. controlled up, the fear not quite in time for the save. And oh, Exclamation finds a solo kill on Hyrule in the bot lane. Yeah, this Nyx is all over the map. I've got to say that the H is putting on a bit of a show uh, with this Nyx series. Yeah. I think that they've they played it before and they, they are very, very good. Yeah, we can see isolated cores. See, Pudding had confidence in it because they went right back to it, uh, first picking it in this draft. Um, I think it was a little of a quieter performance last game, but this game, H is is just feasting. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I think Yuki's been uh, way more scattered um, and and isolated. Right, they're looking to respond and kind of a like counter initiate more than they are like group and, and push um and that's where nyx really shines um and really does not afford the opportunity to to respond to a lot of these these kills they're they're kind of just uh, sudden uh assassinations onto the, the nature's prophet who is trying to, to get eke something out of the map like they, they they're pinging out yeah literally nyx <laughs> is pinging out this uh this nature's prophet in the bottom lane um spots them on a courier uh, oh, and everybody, they had the smoke. Nature is very, very dead. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. What a, it's already a level 3 Dagon. I love it. H has level 5 Dagon, then Midas in the queue. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so we were talking about it for the Rubik. So the the Dagon, um, it it builds out of the, the voodoo, voodoo mask, mask now, and they they yeah. increased the spell life steal you get for it was it's basically Dagon one got very buffed. Dagon five is about the same, mm -hmm. um, because you get the fifteen percent light spell life steal at all levels of Dagon now, um, and the cooldown was reduced by like eight seconds at level one. Um, yeah, that's really good. The same at level five. That's a huge Nyx buff. I, I, I didn't even remember seeing that. Claire pushing things out. He tries to control them up. I think especially when you consider that like things like Kaya were buffed in the patch, right? Yeah. So now the spell life's... Oh, well, I guess that went down. That's the one thing about Kaya that got worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, the amplification went up. So a lot of these like uh, nuking cores or nuking supports do, do well going into that build um a bit of a, a, a difference than the the shivas and mage slayers that were so popular before what are you greg He's running up onto the high ground still has ages and battle trance a dominating so absolutely not Nage. scared bork exclamation finds up. bork yeah over in the jungle and what are you greg just Oh, Greg's gonna die here. Yeah, the E-Blade is gonna take down the Aegis. Things on to the battle transfer the second life. But slowly but surely, Buttery Greg and Clay are gonna work down this barracks. See what Pudding chooses to do from here. Hook not gonna find them a target. Because that would have been the easy answer, is you hook somebody and then you, you take another set of barracks, because <laughs> what are they gonna do down two heroes? Yeah, it is it is a harder task for H to find these heroes uh, on the high ground. Uh, although they have proven that they can do it time and time again. Uh, the Dark Willow Eggs coming out just in time uh, for the next set of racks they want to defend. Uh, I think that that'll improve their, their ability to stand and fight quite a bit on the side of Yuki, but I don't know if it'll be quite enough. 
with the lead, the 15k gold lead that uh, the Radiant have already accumulated. Yeah. <clears throat> that is that is also funny. I think, uh, is it not Yuki who have played Dire in both of these games? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> so, at, and they were first and then second pick, if I remember correctly. Um, so, you know, Radiant is, is certainly, I think, the favored side in most cases these days. Yeah. Mega kill. As they get a mega kill from it on Venice Snow, but they do get their revenge this time. They finally bring down this next assassin. It's the mega kill streak going the way of 8888. Blow up through any chance of escaping into the Shadow Realm. At the end of the day, Miss Snow is the support on paper, so yeah. don't really mind making that trade. As Eagle's going to try to run down Hyrule. Hyrule getting out of the rot. Evil going to come over and connect. This probably just zoom in with the haste ring. Gonna yeah. Waddle right on out of there. Um, uh, Larry Greg and V facing each other in the top lane. Yeah, Shun oh, uh, sneaks through that Rick's gate as running. well. Let's have the Hyrule. battle transfer. Here's Hyrule with the Orchid. Islanced? Not gonna be enough. Yeah, not enough. And now gonna turn on to Shun, but nice E-Blade, that's why you have it. Shun trying to get away, but rooted up and gonna get brought down. Bork goes in, the damage from Buttery Greg down to heals as R shows up. Oh, an exclamation as well, blows up 8888. Hyrule went down as well, Bork to fall next and four are dead out of nowhere that's gonna open the door for this last tier two to go down and really really showing off the power of that orchid there yeah or sorry sorry the uh the uh, sny to yes. the orchid yeah uh because <laughs> so my bad uh i mean it does it displays that like uh it's not necessarily as much uh dispelling it as it is limiting the window in which you can kill a hero mm -hmm. uh and and Greg able to live through that, that initial barrage of like, TPs and, and gates and whatever else Yuki throws at them, and it's, as long as they get the ult off, they they getting up these fights. Indeed, another barracks to go down, and as everybody respawns on Yuki, it's like this could be kind of their final stand. Or Greg just working the troll attacks on our player is going to get a little bit left alone up on this high ground. Nyx in on the back is just going to find Hyrule. Again, there's no towers, even with that sentry placed between where the barracks once stood. Able to get in just enough to pick off the Nature's Prophet. Does... They were able to force putting off of the mid barracks, so it's not Mega Creeps yet. They did tier 3 tower. I think they just want the tier 3 neutrals in 30 seconds, get a little bit of a, a, a boost, and then dive right back in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they've got battle trans back up now. They've, they've got everything. Yeah, they, um, they're, they're not going to wait. They're just going to go. Oh, and the hook out of the base on 888. They didn't get the fear, but able to get the battle trance off. They're going to control it. Buttery Greg is going to get dragged all the way under the towers, but now healing up. Oh, no. Off of that battle trans life steal. Now Claire right in on the back, but gets sprouted. It's response from Hyrule. Able to survive the tower shots with the evasion from Windrun and Hexclamation Ooh. right back in. Finds the kill, has the blink dagger to sneak in, and it's four dead again, and somehow nobody on putting the R and RD L dies there. So that's Mega Creeps. No buybacks available, so it's gonna be tier fours, and that's gonna be game number two. Wow, yeah, no, it, it, this was a very different story than the first game, and, and Yuki's uh, the whole draft concept kind of kind of fell apart uh, relatively quickly, I'd say, this game. Um, and they, they were not able to bring it back, so it looks like this game is going to end pre-28 minutes, or very close to it. Yep. They kind of messed around with this Underlord in the back. They're unstoppable. It was Fiend's oh, Gate oh, behind them. <laughs> and yeah, that, that does... Keep them from uh, losing before the 28th. Sad. Master Curse. I was looking for the, the fastest game in this, this, this league, but 
Yeah. Yeah. Looks like Greg wants a rampage instead. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Not even gonna get it. Yep, player what a steals shame. It. <laughs> yeah, called of... putting the R in RD22L. I don't know why I can't say RD2L. There's something about it. I think like I get halfway through and my brain's like, you meant mm -hmm. to say R2D2, right? And I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> um Yes, yeah, so that that is a pretty clean 2-0 for team pudding. Uh they I mean, yeah, that I, I loved what Yuki was cooking uh, in that draft. I think it needed a little more time in the oven. Um, I think I think Pudding kind of pulled the plug on that one with that rune fight, the full team wipe that was just made everything harder for their lanes, basically all three lanes, starting with the advantage for Pudding. And then from there, like the... I, I think the mid or the the offlane Rubik has its potential. I think the position four PA has potential, but I think together, especially into a, a lane like Undying Troll, it's just just not a lane that can survive and come out ahead to get get the ball rolling the way you want to with that duo. Yeah, if Gordon Ramsay were giving critiques, I think he'd say it's fucking raw. <laughs> um, it, 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 not that it couldn't have been something beautiful, not that it couldn't have worked. Um, it was definitely difficult to execute, and it was very in the style of Yuki, uh, but it just didn't come through in this in this game. Um, it didn't look uh, like nearly as threatening as as the game one did, and uh, yeah. No, it was really, really difficult uh, to to come back even from that, you know, mm. first team wipe uh, pre horn. Yeah, we'll say, uh, yeah, just what can you do? Sometimes, it, 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 you know, your 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 plans they don't come out the way you expect. Sometimes your chicken doesn't come out the way you expect. <laughs> go, go back to the kitchen and get cooking. Yeah. We'll see them next week. Yeah, I think if nothing else, it was a good, it was a fun place to try and experiment. I think, especially in this like smaller upper division of just four teams, you get this double round robin. We're getting near the end of the group stage; only one week left after this, so you kind of know where all of the rankings are going to fall at this point, um, with how things are shaping up. So you mm. know, you've got a, you've got a little bit of an opportunity to to cook to to try different things out see if you can come up with some new strategies that are gonna work out for you at the playoffs yeah no i i i think that uh any you're shaking off the like in some ways like some of those nerves and some of those uh those ideas that you have it's still early into a patch there's, there's still a lot to kind of uh parse out and yeah we have we have playoffs coming soon so it, it's not as if uh, these teams will not have a chance to to face off again, uh, potentially. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, do you want to award uh, an MVP for the series? My 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 guess is H. I think 17 kills in the second game and yeah. uh, a, a solid performance in the first on the next assassin. Uh, probably probably makes them the 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 best uh, player overall this series. Yeah, H absolutely the mvp for game two the the knicks mm -hmm. ran over that game like you said 17 and 4 from the position four role and yeah i i would agree um played quite well a bit of a quieter game uh in game one for the knicks but still like was doing plenty of work uh setting up fights getting the the critical impales in some of those fights to uh uh, to really secure them, like which, like we said in game, that game one, everything was so nice edge that you know those those little things made all of the difference. So yeah, I would say game two MVP and series MVP. I'm I'm happy to give to to Hexclamation for this this Nick's assassin performance. Yeah, killer. All sure. right. Yeah, that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, keep an eye out. I think that also concludes week five um, for We Like Dota League. So one more week of group stages coming up next week. Keep an eye out for those and have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye, everybody.